Welcome back to First Steps in Learning C Sharp, brought to you by Protopic and Railcon Systems. My name's Roy Fisher, and this is Lesson 2. We will continue with our objective of getting you up and running with C Sharp as quickly as possible. Without further ado, let's fire up Visual Studio. We're going to start a new project, as before, in Visual C Sharp, and it'll be a console application. And we'll just call this Lesson 2. Here's our stub of a program. Uh, notice we have the name of the program we call Lesson Space 2. It's been replaced with this namespace, Lesson Underscore 2. Uh, most programming languages, and C Sharp is no exception, don't like spaces in the middle of names. In week one, we looked at some string variables, and we'll be coming back to string variables over and over again in this course. But for the moment, we're going to look at a new type. This type will allow us to look at whole numbers whole numbers such as 7, 500, minus 30, 0, and so on, but not numbers like 4.6123. And this type will be an integer. And we'll type in the keyword here, int, space, and we'll give this variable a name. We'll call it x, and we'll give it the value 5. And we'll complete our statement with the semicolon. Once again, we see the familiar green squiggly line. It tells us that we've still got more to do. We've no, made no mistakes, but got more to do. We've made X. We now have to use it. We'll fix that right now. I'm going to paste two lines of code in. The first line, the right line method of the console class, will write out some information to the console screen. The second line will wait, allow us to read the message, and then press Enter to continue. Let's run and examine the console window. And the console prints out the value of x is 5. We're waiting for that with the read line for an enter. So I'll press enter. To those of you who've programmed before, there should be nothing too surprising about that. But C Sharp has a few surprises in store for us. Let's click just past the x, put in the dot operator, and have a look at the IntelliSense. It's telling us that we can do lots of things with the integer. I'm going to pick the two string operator or the two-spring method, and needs something else. In fact, it needs an open bracket, a close bracket. So that may be a bit odd to many of you, but it can get even odder. Let me go in here, and let's change that x with a value 99. Now that sounds nonsense. 99.2-string? Let's run that again. If you think there's a lot to C-sharp, you're right. We're just going to touch on it very briefly to get you up and running. I've chained the 99 back to x again, and we're going to have a look at something new. x, remember, was called a variable of type integer, and here we initialized it in the declaration statement. Declaration is where we essentially said to C Sharp, we're going to be using a variable called x. And I'm going to do a little bit of arithmetic. x equals x plus 1. And I need my semicolon, so in she goes and run this again. Let's look at what happens. You probably can guess this quite easily. Yes, you're right. X is now the value 6. This is an assignment statement. Uh, we've basically said, let the new value of X equal the old value of X, which was 5, plus the number 1. So 5 plus 1, 6, and that's what we saw there. Some of the more observant of you may have noticed that before we ran that program, we still had a green squiggle under here. That just takes time for the Visual Studio sometimes to catch up. Uh, everything was okay, but when we run it, that green squiggle disappeared. If you're a mathematician and new to programming, this statement may worry you a little bit. In mathematics, x equals x plus 1 is probably a nonsense. This, of course, is not a mathematical statement. In programming terms, it should be read as follows. Take the value of x which currently is 5, add 1 to it to make 6, and put this new value 6 and replace the old value of x. So x now has the value 6. I hope that helps. Programmers will recognize that adding 1 to a value, incrementing it, is very common practice in programming. C Sharp has a nice shorthand way of doing this. We can write x plus plus semicolon and run. And when we do so, we see that x now has the value 6. x++ plus plus is a very efficient way of writing x equals x plus 1. We can even write this as plus plus x. 
Let's run that to confirm. And x has the value 6. In many ways, we can think of this plus plus x or x plus plus as being equivalent to x equals x plus 1. But be careful. C sharp is subtle. It has twists. Allow me to demonstrate. I can legitimately write that statement as x equals plus plus x. Let's run that. And it tells us the value of x is 6. We see no difference. Before we continue, let's just clarify what's happening here. We're taking a copy of the value of x, which is 5, a copy. We're incrementing it, making it 6, and we're assigning that value 6 as the new value of x. So that's the way it's done. And it gives us the answer we probably expect. Let's just change that round. Let's now change that to x equals x plus plus. Let's run. The value we get is still 5. We might have expected that to be 6. It's not. Let's examine this line very carefully. We take a copy of the value of x, which is 5. We then assign it to x, so x is still 5, and then we increment the copy. In fact, the copy is thrown away. The value we have here is still the old value. Notice that whether the plus plus comes before or after the x, it can have a big difference on the results. Just a trap for the unwary. If you didn't understand all of that, don't worry over much. It's only when we combine uh, x plus plus or plus plus x with other statements or within other statements that we may have a problem. Most of the time, you'll just be having a nice simple statement, x plus plus, and that will increment it just fine. But just to confirm that, as a reminder, if you don't believe me, and the value of x is 6. You may wonder here, can I use minus minus? Let's try it. And run, and pull over, and we get the value of x is 4. Yes, x minus minus is the decrement. Minus minus x, I'm not going to show you, but that will work as well. We've used one new C-sharp keyword today, the int keyword. We're now going to create a new one. We're going to create a keyword that will allow us to represent a constant. In this case, a constant integer value. So I'll type with the keyword const, comes in blue, int to show the type, and the name, we will call it my const. And we'll give it a value of 7 to start with. When I do that, I get my green squiggly line, which tells me I've not used it yet. Let's use it by pasting some pre-written code. We have here a line, no squiggles around, just checking. And x is whatever value x is from that first argument. And my const is the one value, which is the second in the string, or second in the line. So let's run and confirm that that works OK. And indeed, x is 5 and my constant 7, exactly as we hopefully should have predicted. Let's try and do some arithmetic with uh, my const. And we'll do my const plus plus. We'll use the increment operator. And before we get any further, we can see that we have the red bad news squiggle. What we've done makes no sense. We've told the C-sharp compiler that my const is a constant, which, of course, we can never change. That's what we use variables for. So this is obviously nonsense, and we will remove it before anyone sees it. I wanted to show you the power of C-sharp, and that's why I introduced the two-string method here, to show you that it can be applied to what we can normally see just as a straight number. It's not just as simple as that. I wanted to get in early with the two-string, because you'll see this over and over again in your C-sharp journeys. For the moment, I'm going to remove them to show you a bit more of the power of C-sharp so that we get back to just the straight values. So I'll remove the two string methods from there. And we're going to examine this format string. I can change what I do here uh, by putting in a colon followed by a C, a little C or a big C, either will do in this case. And when I run this, I can see that the value of x has been represented in UK pounds, or Great British pounds. Now that's because I live in the UK. If you live in Europe or in the States, you'll see the euro or the dollar as appropriate to your local settings. Let's continue. I'm going to look at another one here for the moment. That's the x. I can use a small x or a big x. Personally, I prefer a big X. To show the effect of this, I'm going to change the value of my constant from the number 7 to the number 255. 
those of you who have experience of such things, uh, will see that uh, the value of my const is now given not in decimal, it's 255, but is given in hexadecimal. Again, a small x or a big x will make uh, no difference here. Apart from, a big x will give large alphas, while a small x will give small alphas. Personally, I prefer the uppercase ones. There's a, a number of different format specifiers we can use here. I'll change this one to, let me think, let me think, let me think, E. I'll use a large E, small E again, and the output of that is the mathematicians among you will recognize that as being 5 times 10 to the power 0, which indeed is 5. Anyway, whether you understand the actual number systems there or not is irrelevant. This format specifier is very, very powerful. And in fact, we can remove it from the right line statement by creating a new variable and showing the effect. Let's reuse that. First, I create a string variable s. Notice that I can intersperse uh, declarations anywhere within my code. They don't all have to come at the beginning. So I've got an s there. Let's give it a value. Let's just say that s equals, and now I type in a string, and then a dot. And the format statement, which is there nicely for us, it's obviously commonly used. And I'm going to put open bracket, close brackets, semicolon. Uh, that's red at the moment because this needs to be fed something. We need to have something in these brackets. We need a, a parameter. And I'm going to copy this. Put that in. Paste. And then I'm going to put... Oops, I needed quotes there. has to be a string in here. So strings always start with a double quotes. And then I'll put in X. Let's put a console right line in, just so that we can see what it's worth. No errors anyway so far. Uh, Control-V, and then we'll just put in S. Let's run that. And what I get is exactly what we have here, but of course not including my const. We've actually stored this format string in a string. Uh, let's uh, add another line. We'll do a little bit of arithmetic here. We'll do, yes, arithmetic on strings. S equals S plus, so far so good, string dot format. And I'll put in this. And we'll take this part. previous format string. In we go. I obviously need to have my constant there as well, so let's steal that. So what we have here is essentially broken this one line down into two. No errors I can see. Confirm that. We clearly have a problem here. The compiler didn't pick up any problems, so we didn't have a design time error. This information here looks rather daunting, but it's essentially saying is I found something wrong when I ran it. But the console window has still appeared. In fact, all, only the first line, this right line, has appeared. The second line has not occurred, or the break has happened there, the problems happened there. That seemed okay, that seemed okay. This line here seemed incorrect, but at runtime, not design time. Let's see if we can work out what's happened. Well, first of all, there's a few clues here that can help us. One is the line this confirms, this yellow uh, highlighting here, confirms that this indeed was the runtime error line. So, that's good. We can forget all of this at the moment and focus only on that. Format exception was unhandled. An exception. An exception, basically, is something over which we might have no control. In this case, we do. It's bad codings cause this. But in some cases, an exception may be caused by a missing file or some network error, something the programmer can't actually predict or, or work to. Except in C Sharp, we have a whole host of different ways to help us handle runtime errors. There are clues in this first line. The index is zero-based. We've heard that before, zero-based. Must be greater than or equal to zero and less than the size of the argument list. 
Mm, don't know what that means in English, but if we look very carefully here, we might be able to work it out. I'll give you a couple of seconds. Long enough, long enough. Yet yeah, the argument's that number, one. The argument is a one. But remember, we talked about zero-based, so that should be a zero. It was one there, of course, because it was the zero and the one. But there's only one argument here, so that has to be changed to a zero. Let's do that right now. Let's uh, just finish this off, close it down, and change this one to a zero. And reissue our code to the compiler. We have contact. We have an exact replica of this line with this line. We've uh, introduced a string, we've given it a value, and everything we learn about in the right line how to format a string is also useful when we're doing strings. We'll be getting more of this later. Our last issue today is we're going to take a very brief peek at how to make decisions in C Sharp. And a peek is all you're going to get. That's the line of code that I've modified and added something to. I'll let you think about it. Next day, we'll pick up on the if statement and carry on with what we've been doing so far, which is to give you a quick overview of the C-sharp language. Until then, goodbye.